it makes for a much more intimate and personal conversation. You dive straight into a discussion about people's values, about their core fundamental values. What is it that's important about their money to them? What's important about the world to them? Right. What do they want to change? What are they most afraid of? What are their hopes and dreams for their kids and for the future? That's a conversation about their values. It could be the environment. It could be it could be fairness. It can be global social justice. It can be, are my daughters going to have the same opportunities as my sons? You can use the power of your money to influence the directions of these issues. Yeah. Like when people realize that, they get excited. Hi, I'm Chris Reynolds, and I'm on a mission to help independent financial advisors build a better business through a remarkable client experience. In this podcast, you're going to learn how to do that from my conversations with the visionaries, the leaders, the independent advisors who are reshaping the future of the financial advice industry. At the end of each episode, you're going to walk away with an actionable idea that you can take and use right now, and it will help you to build a better business today. This is Turning the Page. Well, today I'm very excited. This is going to be a great podcast. I already know it. We have Sonia Leroy with us, uh, who also spoke, and we were just chatting about that, spoke at our most recent conference. Um, and, and this is going to be a great topic. I already know it. Now, Sonia has been in the business 30 years, believe it or not. She started when she was 10. This was There was a, <laughs> a, a lower licensing standard uh, uh, back then. And as I said, I was reading through her biography and I'm like, I'm not sure I'm going to have time for the show going through all this stuff. Uh, you are co-author of a book, Financial Success for Women by Women. Uh, you just, I have to read this all, by the way. You just won, congratulations, by the way, for 2022, the five-star leading women in wealth by wealth professionals. So congratulations on that. Thank um, you. You've been, and, and it, it, it really, you'll, uh, the, my listeners will hear that once I go through it, how much you give back to the community. Um, and I'll have you talk a little bit more about that and, 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 and your personal, you know, sort of mission as it right. But you have won, once again, the Wealth Professional Award for um, Philanthropy and Community Service, as well as in IPC in 2018, you won the IPC Cares Award for Philanthropy and Community Service. Not only that, to my listeners, she not only does that, she also volunteers in Senegal, which I'll have her talk a little bit more about, but a third degree black belt in karate. <laughs> so also dangerous. So <laughs> Sonia, uh, welcome to Turning the Page. Thank you. We go to extreme measures to protect our clients' money. I was going to say, they must feel very safe with a third degree black belt who does uh, all of this. Now, you have a very... I'm going to call it a unique story. You have a unique uh, focus in this industry. So, you know, the easiest way is tell our listeners sort of your story. How did you get here? Um, why did you choose the path that you're on? And we'll talk more about the successes that you've had. Yeah, well, I always have been interested in money. And that may seem like a funny thing to say, but I was very conscious of investing in stocks and from a very, very, very young age and also social responsibility. Mm -hmm. Both of those things came from my family. My grandmother actually was a stockbroker. Wow. She was one of the first female stockbrokers in Ottawa. And um, when I was a little girl, I would go up to see her office downtown and see the ticker tape and see her <laughs> set up and she'd be reading the stock pages and her graphoscopes when we were at the cottage when I was a little girl and wow it just seemed normal to me that's what you know grandmas do <laughs> the three grandmas do <laughs> doesn't your grandma invest in stocks and keep you up to date on what's going on in the economy <laughs> she gave us stocks as gifts when we were kids and not only that introduced me to the idea of responsible investing um made me attend shareholders meetings and vote my share proxies. Oh, wow. Even that. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I was very, very keen to start a career in um, financial planning, helping people make decisions about their money in a responsible way that helped them and helped everyone else at the same time. And um, I'm thrilled to have been doing this for 33 years. 
And, and as I said, and you started when you were 10. So you've had, uh, you know, you started at a very young age. You had a great mentor uh, with your grandmother, which I think that's a fantastic story. Now, now not you're very unique in the Canadian marketplace. And so what are the, some of the reasons why advisors should look at this space? How, how did you bring sort of your own philosophies into the business and how do you communicate that with your clients? And I think that's the best way to approach it if I was talking to advisors. Okay. So first of all, let's maybe talk about what is sustainable investing. Right. That's or, a good start. You're absolutely right. Because it's sometime, different versions and definitions. Absolutely. So you're absolutely right with that. Yeah. So sustainable investing, or as it's more often called ESG, environmental, social, and governance investing, is widely misunderstood, I think. Right. Because it can actually mean, as you mentioned, so many different things to so many different people. It's not necessarily ethical or values-based investing or even investing for the environment, but it can be. Think of it in terms of different levels of ESG on a spectrum right. from um, an excellent being an excellent non-financial tool to assess risk right. to screening out unethical companies or prob problematic industries, or at least those with the worst behaviors. Um, <laughs> exactly. Think, At least eliminate those. Yeah. Thinking about stewardship differently, influencing your investments to behave as better corporate citizens, as my grandmother thought I should do by mm -hmm. exercising my voting proxies. Um, to true impact investing, making a difference with your money, exercising the power to influence the direction you want to see the world go in. Right. So because it can mean so many different things, I prefer to call it responsible investing. Yeah, which makes sense. Is is and I, and I guess that resonates with your clients. They want yeah. to be responsible. Absolutely. And that term encompasses really all of the above, everything I described on that spectrum of ESG sustainable investing and leaves room for each individual investor to figure out what is their way. So right. I see my role as helping investors figure out what their way is and then I deliver a solution that aligns their money with their version of responsible investing. That's interesting. Is So how does that conversation go with your clients? And maybe just give, give a couple of examples. I think that would be great. Even for yeah. my own benefit, I think that would be great. Sure. So it, it, it was a process. I, um, you know, I've been an advisor for a long time and I'd say about 20 years ago, I really started to actively introduce responsible investing into my client practice and really about 10 since for about the last 10 years that's right. been my primary focus in my in my practice and so the way to talk to clients about it and this is advice for other advisors you know if you haven't right. done this before what kind of things should you be asking clients to introduce this concept or find out if they're interested in it? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, they probably are. And I'll tell you why later. Um, but do you consider yourself to be a responsible consumer? Right. You know, that would, most that's how people you do. Mm -hmm. Most people don't leave the lights on unnecessarily. Most people think twice about the way they consume, especially the way they buy their cars these days. Ask them if they've thought about what it could mean to be a responsible investor. And that question can really stop people in their tracks. That's the point at which I often get from clients, wow, no one's ever asked me that before. Right. What does that mean? I didn't know that was possible. Actually, that's less common now because investors are much more aware. Right. But I'd right. say even three years ago, that was absolutely a common response. They appreciate being asked that question. And I say, if you could integrate your personal values into your investment strategy, would that be interesting to you? I've never had anyone say no, I ever. Would, I don't know. I would like to meet the person who had no <laughs> as part yeah. of that question. And then, you know, the next step that introduces them into responsible investing is, would you like to know what that could look like? Hmm. Then you're on your way. And then you're going... So, and that must yeah. open up some very, very interesting conversations with clients. And, and, and to, as a, the earlier point, everyone has sort of a different viewpoint, different, you know, take on it. Um, yeah. 
but I bet they feel good. And, and, it, and you know, just sitting here, it, it really positions you differently in the marketplace because the, you know, usually the financial advisors have these sort of standardized questions and this and that would probably take the conversation in a very interesting uh, direction and really open up to you, I would imagine. Yes, absolutely. So it makes for a much more intimate and personal conversation. You dive straight into a discussion about people's values, about their core fundamental values. What is it that's important about their money to them? What's important about the world to them? Right. What do they want to change? What are they most afraid of? What are their hopes and dreams for their kids and for the future? That's a conversation about their values. It could be the environment. It could be, it could be fairness. It can be global social justice. It can be, are my daughters going to have the same opportunities as my sons? You can use the power of your money to influence the directions of these issues. Yeah. Like when people realize that, they get excited. That's very, very powerful. And I bet from a introduction point of view, getting referrals and, and endorsements, I bet that just automatically leads to other people who have common philosophies that they're having these types of conversations with their friends and family as well, I bet. Exactly. Yeah. So really all, all my existing clients, all my new clients that come in are referrals from other clients who are really all responsible investing clients. So they're coming to me really already with thoughts about wanting to align their money with their values. Maybe they've never been offered the opportunity to do that before. Don't right. know how to do it. We've got a pretty complicated ESG slash sustainability slash responsible investing environment out there. And so you're right. When, when, when clients are investing that way already, that leads to conversations with other people. People are interested. They call me. I help them sort it out. And that's how you end up with an all responsible right. yeah. investing based practice. Now, do you bring your own story in that? I know you share, uh, you know, share my passion of what I call on the ground uh, volunteerism. I know the work that you've done in Sen Senegal. Uh, so maybe expand on that. And, and do you bring those into that conversation? Or is that a natural flow? Or is that more something personal that they find out later? Yeah, I, I do talk to my clients about that, but not as part of my story. It, it comes out in a conversation. Um, but I, because it's not about my values, right? You know, I invest my portfolio according to my values to align with my values, but my, I want to, my client's investment strategy to align with their values. But if sometimes people actually have trouble articulate, like everyone's got it in there, right? Everyone right has values, of course, everyone cares about something, everyone's worried about something, they might not be able to articulate it clearly. And part of what I want to do is help them articulate, define, wrap their head and their hands around those values, so that we can, you know, list them, and then right. provide solutions to match. So it, sometimes in helping to tease that out, I will tell my own story. Right. And, uh, you know, it actually started very, very long ago, even before my grandmother started teaching. Well, no, probably around the same time my grandmother got me, you know, in understanding there's such a thing as a responsible investor. Right. My parents adopted two, two girls, two of my sisters um, from Haiti when I was right. eight years old. And... Um, so I became aware of global social justice issues and unfairness and inequality on this planet yeah. very early very in early. life, very early. And that really helped define really the path of my entire life. And um, my, my parents were always extremely interested in global social justice. You know, we, my, my dad um, always always discussed with us how he contributed to foster parents plan right. and actually went to Africa to meet the family that we were supporting. Wow. And that's a cool so story. I didn't know that. We go all <laughs> yeah. out and deep with everything we <laughs> sign up for. That's amazing. <laughs> and, and, and 
so later in life, um, once I was an adult, I started giving back and volunteering and felt like it's really important to share what we have. If it, you know, my rule is if I can, I must right. when it comes Ooh, to I like it. sharing what I have, whether it's knowledge, whether it's money, whether it's skills, whether it's whatever it is. And I started volunteering in uh, Senegal, actually with my family, with my mm-hmm. dad about 12 years ago. I've been 22 times since then. Wow. Is it up to 22? Even yeah. I, keep track I was just of there in the that summer. That is so awesome. Actually, my daughter is there right now for the first time without me. Yeah. Ooh, so I, how's she liking it? Are you, have you heard from her? Absolutely. I think I'm not talking to her a couple times a day, every day. <laughs> Three, four or five <laughs> times a day. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, we're, the project that we're involved with there is helping um, forced begging street kids find hope for the future, find a path to being free, being independent, being able to live their own lives responsibly. I also volunteer here at home with Kids Kicking Cancer. Right, which I love, um, yeah. It's actually a, a martial arts program for kids with cancer. To It's non-contact karate to help kids feel empowered. Right. Help them feel in control of something in a situation that's totally out of control. Help them um, control their pain through right. meditation, yes. breathing, yes. breathing techniques, yeah. and and being able to punch something. You know, <laughs> get some of that frustration out. Yes. Exactly. Help bring them a sense of power, peace, and purpose. So we do that here at home, and 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 so giving back, sharing what we have, is my value. And, right. and so I can tell that story to my clients. I want to do no harm with my money. I want right. justice. I want the supply chain to reflect, you know, fair labor practices. I don't want to see exploitation in the things I'm, I'm invested in. If, if, if it's impossible to avoid it, I don't want to necessarily boycott it. I want to be part of changing it. Right. Helping change, which is an important part. And I think, you know, to, to expand on that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now for my clients, they often have very different kinds of things they want to focus on. Often it's, it's climate change that terrifies people that hurts them Mm -hmm. to think about the future, you know, with, with climate change, what can they do towards making that better or limiting the damage? And and that that's I would say that's the number one issue would be environmental sustainability that that my that clients care sense. about, but but social fairness, justice, fair trade, you know, not wanting to be part of exploitation that's a very very close second. Right. And uh, yeah. you know, and I can promoting- certainly see that like in in any, any dinner conversation uh you know uh, these topics come up on on a very regular basis no matter what circles that you uh you operate in and you've provided an outlet for clients to actually have that discussion and and, and utilize their money for something that's good and i think other advisors have the same opportunity but you're unique in the industry that i don't know of anyone else that has the same intensity and focus in this space that you do I know a lot of people that do a lot of advisors. <laughs> I'm not definitely yeah. not not that unique. In not this alone, but uh, as I said, your <laughs> personal story and how you got to this particular stage in your mm. career. And, and so that's sort of my next question is, what is next? Where do you see um, evolving this? And what can we learn from what you've learned from over these years? So what, what would you take all that knowledge and what would you say is next for you? Yeah, so it's... For me, I'm I'm completely committed to responsible investing. I think it's it's the way of the future. It's the way of the past. It's just easier to do it now. We can do it more effectively. We can do it without a trade off. You do, no need to give up rate of return or take on extra risk. In fact, one of the uh, really interesting things about responsible investing is that I think it can actually improve the risk reward trade off. Right. For investors, evidence is growing that um, companies who perform better on an ESG basis actually experience fewer risk events and can even be more likely to be profitable over time. And um, so, first of all, I think that kind of ESG integration is it's just that's on its way to being table stakes. Absolutely. In terms of how how the investment community 
manages money, chooses what where they're going to put their money. I, I you know, the Responsible um, Investment Association trends report just came out for 2022, right. and I think they measured that there's three trillion dollars under assets under management in Canada that is invested with some sort of form of ESG or sustainable or responsible investing criteria. Wow. That's a lot. Wow. And, yeah. and it, well, that and then, doesn't make everyone take notice. I don't know what will. <laughs> yeah. And then IFIC, um, their 2021 poll, they said that 60% of mutual fund and 63% of ETF investors who did not currently invest with an RI strategy said they may in the future. Like, Plenty. wake up, Ooh. advisors. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so that's it. So, I, But there's I, so much more to it. You know, money is power. Yeah. And with power comes responsibility. And if you want to connect with your, your clients on a values level, an intimate level, I mean, you, you should be bringing this to them just for those reasons I just mentioned, just because to help manage the risk reward scenario and because people are thinking about it people want it we should be delivering this as an alternative but to be able to have those more intimate values based connections with our clients is a really special powerful thing like i feel so privileged to be involved in those conversations when i have them with my clients and it's easy to have those conversations at that level with clients if you ask the right questions right so nope, why would absolutely. we why would we not and I think, you know, just being on this podcast is going to, I think, and I'm hoping, and this is our, our, our joint goal now, is other people start to have those conversations with their clients. Yes. So I have another section of my podcast, which we always surprise people with. So we didn't give you this in advance. It's called my rapid fire questions. I have three uh -huh. questions and answer them in the first thing that pops into your head. So my first rapid fire question is, what is your favorite thing to do? Oh, karate. I love martial arts. Right. It is awesome to be able to punch somebody in the face while they're punching you in the face. <laughs> that is the best answer of all my shows. That's the best answer yet. Can you name uh, one meaningful interaction that you had with a client that you've re that just comes to you, you remember, you'll remember it forever. Can you remember one meaningful interaction that you had with a client? I've had so many, I don't know where to begin. So many are popping into my mind. It's like, <laughs> it's like a screen that's getting filled up with all of these different situations. So let me just tell you about um, one particular client, a brand new client referred to me from another responsible investor. And she came to me because she heard that there is such a thing about responsible investing. She works in a responsible industry, ethical, oh. ethical trade type of industry. So her life is devoted to living sustainably, but her money was in indexes, mm. as most right. people's money is in indexes, invested in everything. If you look too closely at what's in an index, you know, most people would be horrified to know what they're uh, participating yep. in and profiting from. Anyway, she came to me and by the end of our conversation about values, what she's, what's important about her money to her, what's, what are her objectives for this world? What does she want to see happen to make this world a better place? And then when she realized her money was able to align with that vision, she was literally crying. She was in tears. Wow. She said, I didn't know this was possible. I can't believe I'm having this conversation. I'm so grateful to you. I've I've tried to never think about my money because it bothers me. I don't like to think about it. But now I'm excited to learn more about what my money can do for me in the world. Wow. That, you know, as I said, you 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 never you you certainly don't want a a client to cry in your office, but unless it's for a reason like that. <laughs> so uh, that that's an amazing story. So my final question to you, how do you want to be remembered? Hmm. I want to have made a difference for somebody. You know, and I, I, I said before, if I can, I must. That's how I live my life. That's, that's how I 
interact with my clients. That's, you know, that's why I spend so much time on due diligence. If there's something to know, I need to know it so I can offer the best possible advice. I don't want to not know something I should know and be missing out on what I should be advising my clients. That's how I give back. If there's something I can do, I've got to do it. So I guess I want to be remembered for having, if, if there's something I could have done, I did it. All right. Well, I certainly will, for one, will say that's how I'm always going to remember you. So I'm sure everybody else who's <laughs> around you will remember you that for that as well. Uh, so in wrapping up, I do my little rant. And, you know, my rant is, yes, every advisor should be having these conversations with their client. But also, I think what makes it very much different with you and your clients is how genuine you are. Like, this is a real passion. Whereas I've seen other advisors tippy toe into it. It's not really their passion. It's not really their thing. And it, it, they don't have this deep uh, or meaningful of conversations with their clients on these particular topics. But I do think as a rant, everybody should be having these conversations with mm -hmm. their clients. Everybody should really understand what makes them tick, what their philosophy is and how they want to give back. Absolutely. With that, Sonia, any final words on the, uh, on the topic? Yeah, to advisors who are hearing this and thinking, hmm, maybe I should learn more. I think I want to start having these conversations with clients. And I gave you those questions earlier that you know, are good questions to ask clients to get started. But then what do you say when they answer those questions? You need some right. knowledge. Then what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I suggest to clients. Um, read the Canadian Investment Fund Standards new framework on responsible investing. It really helps break it all down. I, I don't necessarily agree with every part of it, but it's a great place to start to understand the responsible investing landscape. Read the 2022 Responsible Investment uh, Trends Report. It's on the mm -hmm. RIA, Responsible Investment Association website. Check out the Responsible Investment Association website. Become a member. Attend their education days. They're designed for advisors. They're actually designed to be pretty short and sweet and get the message oh. across in as little time and effort as possible. They also want to spread the word. Um, ask for education from fund companies that specialize in responsible investing. They are more than happy to share their knowledge, invite you to workshops. Check out my own responsible investing page on my website. Yep. Go ahead. Um, it's my own framework for sort of trying to understand responsible investing. There's so much you can do to inform yourself so that when you ask those clients, those responsible investing questions, you've got a basis for a conversation with them. <laughs> that is exactly what I was thinking about, meaning these are the great tips that everyone should follow. Sonia, it's been great to have you on the show. I certainly appreciate it. I know all the listeners certainly appreciate all the knowledge that you've passed on. And all I can say is keep doing what you've been doing. Thank you so much and look forward to talking to everybody in our next episode. Thanks for joining me on Turning the Page. What did you learn from today's episode? If you follow me on LinkedIn, please drop me a comment there. I'd love to chat with you about it over virtual coffee. Send me a message on LinkedIn, or you can do so at our website. The link's in the show notes. I'm Chris Reynolds, and until next time.